Hey there, welcome to this lesson on molecule polarity. The uh, question of the day says, look at this Lewis structure. How will electronegativity affect the electrons in this molecule? When we have a molecular substance or a substance that has covalent bonds, there's a lot of electron sharing. And sometimes that sharing is equal and other times it is unequal. That's all going to be based on the electronegativity of the atoms in the molecule. If we look at a Lewis structure, we can kind of determine if this molecule is balanced, if there's a positive region or a negative region. I like to do this by drawing a plus sign through the middle of the molecule to look for symmetry. Now, this is not the same symmetry that you're looking for in geometry class. We are looking for two axes of symmetry. It The molecule must be symmetrical left and right and top and bottom in order for the molecule to be considered symmetrical because again, molecules exist in three dimensions. They are real life things and um, just a two dimensional symmetricalness is not going to cut it on our three dimensional molecules. So it's going to have to be the same top, bottom and left and right. And if it is not the same, then we would say that that molecule is asymmetrical. Looking at this, you should be able to determine that this is a polar bond. We have hydrogen bonded to chlorine, and that chlorine is going to snatch up the shared electrons. Not only that, but chlorine has a bunch of electrons on it already, indicating that this is a very negative end of this bond. Well, this bond is also a molecule. It's a molecule just made of two atoms. That happens a lot of the time. So in this case, not only do we have a polar bond, but we also have a polar molecule. Chlorine is hogging all of the electrons and forms a really negative end on this molecule. We can do the same thing for really any molecule that we can draw a picture of, especially if we can get a two-dimensional picture to look like a three-dimensional molecule. This gets harder the bigger the molecules get. But we can determine if this molecule is lopsided um, using what I like to call SNAP. SNAP stands for symmetrical, nonpolar, asymmetrical, polar. If we have a symmetrical molecule, then we can take a pretty good guess that that molecule is going to be nonpolar. If the molecule is not symmetrical or asymmetrical, then we can assume that that molecule is polar. There's going to be a negative region on the molecule. There's going to be a positive region on the molecule, and we'd be able to put partial charges on our drawings. A polar molecule is a molecule that has an unequal charge distribution. The entirety of the molecule is going to wind up with a positive and a negative region. So in this case, we have um, chloromethane. Chlorine is on a methane molecule. A hydrogen has been swapped out for a chlorine. And in this case, our molecule is not symmetrical. If you draw a plus sign through the middle of it, the top and the bottom are the same, but the left and the right are not. And you have to, again, be symmetrical top, bottom, and left, right, because we're working with a real three-dimensional molecule, not a flat 2D one. So looking at this molecule, it's fairly easy to figure out where all of the electrons are hanging out. The electrons are going to hang out with chlorine because chlorine has a highest electronegativity out of all of the atoms in this molecule. But also there is a giant electron cloud where chlorine is. Chlorine in total has 17 electrons on her own. Plus she's got one that's being shared by the carbon that she's really, really, really tugging on. So this is going to be almost 18 electrons on this side of the molecule with just one, maybe not even one, um, because carbon is going to kind of steal-ish. This their, their electronegativity is very close. Um, but it's going to be pulled a little bit closer to the carbon. So um, this is going to be not even a full electron over here, indicating that this molecule is crazy lopsided. So this is a polar molecule because we do not have equal charge distribution. 
Now, the opposite would be a nonpolar molecule where the electrons are spread evenly across the entire molecule. Um, in some cases, this means they are all being drawn towards the center equally, which is what's happening here. Carbon has a slightly higher electronegativity than hydrogen, so it's going to pull all of the electrons in top, bottom, left, and right in equally. Um, but the opposite can be true as well. You can have carbons four atoms that are added on can pull all of those electrons away from carbon equally. Either way, um, we are going to have a nonpolar molecule because across the whole thing, the electrons are spread evenly. Now again, because we are not having a full transfer of electrons from one atom to the next, the result will be partial charges that we indicate with that lowercase delta that kind of looks like an unfinished eight. Anytime we have non-bonded electrons or in our Lewis structure, they're just dots, that side typically is gonna be the side that is more negative because there are already a bunch of electrons hanging out there, even outside of the tug of war. Now going all the way back to the beginning, I would love for you to figure out where the negative is on a water molecule. I hope you said that the negative region on this water molecule was the oxygen. Reason being is that oxygen has a higher electronegativity than either of the hydrogens, and the oxygen has two lone pairs of non-bonded electrons, which means that it already has four electrons hanging out. Now, this is going to become important when we have lots of molecules in the same place at the same time. The same way that protons and electrons are attracted to each other, molecules can be attracted to each other and repel each other depending on where their electrons are within a molecule. So water is super special because it's polar. Water has, um, if you draw the plus sign, it is asymmetrical, AP, asymmetrical polar, meaning that it has a large negative region right here on the oxygen, and then these hydrogens collectively are going to be the positive. I spoke about this in a previous video. I think it was on Lewis structures, but this is kind of sort of a model of water. <laughs> um, it's not quite. Technically, the black is a carbon, but for the sake of this picture, it's okay that I'm doing this. Um, so this two-dimensional picture that you see on the screen is a little bit different than this three-dimensional model that I'm holding, and that is because no matter how I pluck off and rearrange these bunny ears, which represent the um, lone pairs, or the hydrogen and the single bond, any which way I organize them, um, they're going to wind up looking like this, where I have the two bunny ears kind of beside each other, and then the two hydrogens beside each other. Um, so there's no way to make this look any different. And this is going to indicate that we have a negative region in these electron bunny ears, and we have a positive region in these hydrogens. The hydrogens have their electrons kind of stolen by this oxygen, and then the oxygen also has these bunny ears of lone pairs. So um, water is definitely not symmetrical. We have a negative region in the bunny ears and we have a positive region in the hydrogen. So um, this is a true model of a water molecule. They, they come like this, there's no space for the bunny ears. Um, but if we imagine that this had bunny ears, then this water molecule with its negative region would actually be attracted to the positive region of neighboring water molecules. So what happens is that they'll arrange themselves in space so that the negative electrons are kind of attracted to the hydrogens of a different water molecule. So they sort of hang out together and that's where this is gonna come in. It boils down to a concept called intermolecular forces, which I am so excited to, to talk to you about in the next video. Leave any questions you have in the comment section below. Subscribe so you don't miss this video on intermolecular forces. I'm so excited. Hope to see you there.